While it's easy to tell when something might be wrong with your grow, pinpointing the problem is often much harder to do. So let's go over how to diagnose your sick plants. The first step is to figure out what type of issue you have. A nutrient issue, an environmental issue, a bug issue, or a disease. Nutrient problems are often identified by the plant leaves, either starting from the bottom of the plant, moving up at an even rate, or from the top of the plant, affecting new growth as it develops. Yellowing of the leaves, known as chlorosis, and dying of the leaves, known as necrosis, are the most common signs of a nutrient issue, and so is darkening of the leaves to a deep green color, with all of these generally accompanied by a slowdown of plant growth. Environmental issues will either affect the entire plant all at once, or a specific part of the plant if that part is the area being exposed to an extreme environment. Over and under watering will lead to droopy leaves throughout, and so will prolonged hot temperatures. And having your plants too close to a fan can cause wind damage on the leaves. Now if you have irregular damage throughout the plant, then it's most likely a bug issue. And depending on the bug, it can either be easily identified from the large chunks of leaves missing to being harder to detect due to the microscopic nature of some bugs. Finally, there are diseases, and this can be separated into two categories. First, there are those diseases that are localized to parts of the plant, caused by bacteria or fungi infections. And these are often the result of an environmental or bug issue that exposed or weakened the plant to allow it to be easily infected. Some are visible, such as powdery mildew, partially hidden, such as bud rot, or completely hidden underground in the case of root rot. Next are diseases caused by viroids and viruses, which will affect an entire plant. These can be passed along by bugs moving the virus from one plant to another. But more often for residential growers, it comes from an infected seed or cutting, making this pretty uncommon if you got your seed or cuttings from a reputable source. Virus-based diseases are also the hardest to diagnose because while some viruses, such as a mosaic virus, will give clear signs that the plant is affected by producing a signature look, most others, like the hop lane virus, will just create a stunted plant and can only be detected through lab testing. So now that you've narrowed it down to the type of issue causing your plants to be sick, let's take a deeper dive into each of these categories to see what you can do to try and fix these problems. Nutrient issues that appear from the bottom of the plant, such as yellowing and dying of the leaves, is most often caused by a lack of primary nutrients. This is because all three of the main nutrients found in all plant fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, are mobile nutrients, meaning that the plant is able to pull them from one leaf to another. So if a plant is lacking these nutrients, it's able to pull it from the bottom of the plant to support the newer growth. And this results in the older leaves turning yellow and dying off. Necrosis spots throughout the lower leaves are often due to a lack of magnesium, while necrosis spots throughout the upper leaves are often due to a lack of calcium. If you notice all the new growth of the plant looks off, this is most likely caused by a micronutrient issue, as most of these nutrients are immobile, meaning that the plant can't pull these from the lower leaves, hence why the issue shows up only in the new growth. It's important to also check the pH of your water to ensure that it's within 5.5 to 6.5. 
as a pH outside of this range can lock out specific nutrients and should be adjusted before trying to fix any nutrient deficiency. Dark green leaves, dying of leaf tips, and curling of leaf tips downwards can all be signs of a nutrient toxicity. And to fix this, you'll need to flush out any existing nutrients in your soil before adjusting your fertilizer dosage. As for environmental issues, drooping leaves can either be caused by over or underwatering. The easy way to differentiate between these two is by looking at the stems. If the stems are sagging as well, then it's underwatered, since the water in the stems are what helps it stay upright. And if your stems are still stiff, then it's most likely overwatered. You could also, you know, check the soil to see if it's dry or not. Excessive heat can also cause a plant to wilt, similar to that of an underwatered plant, while the intense heat from a grow light can cause the leaves and flowers to burn. Light damage to the buds can also cause it to constantly try and produce new flower buds to replace the damaged ones, which will cause a line to form like this, known as foxtailing. If your grow environment is too cold, your plant will start to go dormant, slowing down drastically in growth. And a cold environment is also known to cause the plant to change in color, sometimes bringing out different shades of purple, blue, and red, depending on the strain, which is not always a bad thing. When it comes to fixing environmental issues, remember that temperature and humidity goes hand in hand, and that heat can be balanced out with an increase in humidity, and cold can be balanced out with a decrease in humidity. This is why vapor pressure deficit is so important, and we'll be going over temperature, humidity, and VPD next time. Extreme winds or a constant strong wind directed at your plant leaves will damage the leaf cells, leading to droopy leaf tips and necrosis throughout the most battered leaves. And you can fix this by just lowering the fan speed or moving the fans further away from the plant. When it comes to bug damage, large bugs like grasshoppers, slugs, and snails are often the easiest to identify and deal with via physical removal and adding in barriers. Bugs that go through a complete metamorphosis, such as leaf miners and caterpillars, can be dealt with through a mix of physical removal of the infected leaves, the bugs themselves if they are large enough, and through the use of Bacillus thuringiensis, also known as Bt, which is a natural occurring bacteria that's deadly to these type of bugs. Then there are the bugs that like to suck out the plant juices. Scales, mealybugs, aphids, white flies, thrips, spider mites are all part of this group, causing these tiny dots of damage on the leaves. Russet mites and broad mites also fall into this category, but because they're so tiny, it's often hard to identify them even under magnification. And instead of causing a tiny specks of damage on your leaves, the damage they deal can cause this wet or glossy appearance as well as discoloration of the leaf to a bronze or copper color. All of these bugs like to hide and lay eggs on the underside of the leaves as well and are susceptible to both insecticidal soaps as well as a neem oil spray. For something stronger, most of these pests are also susceptible to a spinosad-based insecticide. Then there are the few pests that damage the plant roots, such as fungus gnat larvae, grubs, and cutworms. Combating these require a soil drench of neem oil or just hydrogen peroxide to kill what's underground, followed by covering the top layer of soil with diatomaceous earth which will kill any of the bugs on contact. Or, for fungus gnats specifically, adding an inch layer of playground sand will help prevent new larvae from re-entering the soil. As for diseases, the most common and easiest to remove is powdery mildew, which will create these flower-looking spots 
throughout the infected leaves and buds. Just remove the heavily infested parts of the plant and then spray a milk or baking soda solution on the rest of the plant to prevent it from coming back. Bud rot is a much bigger problem since oftentimes an infected bud won't show any visible signs until late into the infection. And by the time one bud is showing bud rot, other parts of the plant could already be infected. If this happens, the visible infected parts of the plant will need to be disposed of immediately and the rest of the plant should be harvested as soon as possible. You can lower the humidity, increase the airflow, and circulate the air through an air purifier to help prevent the bud rot from spreading if you need to grow the plant a little longer. Although if the bud rot has already spread to other parts of the plant, it may be too late. Root rot is probably the hardest to diagnose because unless you have direct access to your plant roots, for example with a hydroponic system, you won't be able to physically see it. But it typically occurs following an environmental problem in the root zone, such as overwatering or heat stress. The telltale sign of root rot is if the plant looks like it's wilting rapidly due to a lack of water and nutrients, even though the plant has access to these, because the affected roots are now unable to pull in anything up to the rest of the plant. The affected roots will look sort of slimy, discolored, and soft to the touch. So at this point, you can try to cut off the affected roots if possible, Drench the roots with hydrogen peroxide to kill off the bacteria and fungi causing the root rot, or just harvest the plant, as more often than not, by the time the root rot has been confirmed, it's probably spread to most, if not all, of a plant's root system. We'll skip viroids and viruses, since unless the plant shows obvious signs of it, it does require a lab test or a specific type of field test to truly diagnose. And either way, there is no cure for any of these virus-based diseases. But if you believe that this may be the cause of your plant issues, which could be the case if you've ruled out everything else, I'd suggest getting your seeds and clones from another cultivar. These are the most common issues I've come across from my years of growing. And while being able to identify plant issues is an important skill for every grower, prevention of these issues by maintaining a clean and favorable grow environment for your plants is always the best option. I also want to give a big thanks to AC Infinity for sponsoring this video. And you can save 10% off everything at acinfinity.com with coupon code WEEDINAPOT.